Hello. So in this video, I want to talk about um, a little bit about self care. And then I want to talk about two different methods of covering your face that involve no sewing and like no technical skills. And then I'm going to show one way of making a cloth mask using sewing. I have been making sewn masks for about two weeks now. I've donated 25 to Masks for Medicine. Um, I'll link that down below. And they are distributing um, cloth masks to healthcare professionals and different hospitals and places. Um, the head doctor who started it is in New York City and I live right outside of New York City. So I felt like that was very close to my community. And then I've made over a hundred masks for members of my community, doctors at a local hospital, and two businesses in my area. Um, I have charged zero dollars for any of those masks. I think like any company or organization or individual who is trying to profit off of a pandemic is a little icky. Um, that's just, you know, my personal opinion. Uh, that being said, a lot of people wanted to compensate me for my time and materials, so a lot of people kept trying to give me money for the masks, and I basically said that if anyone wants to give money, that I would be donating it to the Community Food Bank of New Jersey. With those donations, um, we've been able to provide 1,100 meals just from the donations people have given me for the masks. And that is really amazing. So, you know, that feels really good. That's all really great. And I'm very grateful to be able to do that. Um, so now I'm just gonna back it up and talk a little bit about self-care. Um, I've personally been self-isolating or in quarantine since the middle of March. I lost my job in the middle of March um, due to the coronavirus. Uh, the business I worked for kind of shut down and I filed for unemployment at the end of the month and I still haven't heard back, which has definitely been a little stressful because it's now approaching the end of April. Uh, the first couple weeks of quarantine, I was kind of at a mix of being super productive some days and then being super depressed and anxious and feeling so overwhelmed other days, which is I think how a lot of people felt. I have been continuing to see my therapist via uh, Zoom, basically, and something she said to me, which I found to be helpful, was you're allowed to be upset about things being cancelled, you're allowed to mourn the loss of activities and birthdays and celebrations, and you're allowed to fall apart and feel terrible and have days of being depressed, but after you fall apart, you have to put yourself back together. You owe it to yourself and you owe it to your future self when quarantine is lifted to put yourself together and hold yourself accountable to certain standards of living. Your productivity is not tied to your self-worth and you should not be trying to like write a novel or like learn a new language or set some huge goal for yourself during this time because I think this time period is very mentally taxing on a lot of people. But that being said, you should set small goals or like a small thing you do every day, whether it be a walk or you get up at, you know, 9.30 every morning and not sleep until 1 p.m. Personally, um, I've been making these masks, which makes me feel really good to be able to help people in this situation. I've also been spending a lot of time working on my personal business and 15% of every sale from my business is also going to benefit the Community Food Bank of New Jersey. I haven't been doing anything crazy, but I've been, you know, spending time making sure that I'm like doing things to keep myself in motion and not just let all the days blur together into some like depressed binge. Being able to donate and to help an organization is great, but you shouldn't feel guilty if you're not doing that either because you can't pour water from an empty bucket, so to speak. So you should really make sure that you and your family and the people immediately in your life are okay. And you can do that, you know, by calling them, by texting people that you love them. 
you know, making a Zoom call. I think social media is falling apart into the cesspool of terribleness. Um, I think that Twitter and Instagram and TikTok are just like sucking the time out of the day and it can really make you feel terrible that you're not being productive or terrible for even being productive when people are guilting you about it. Um, and I think it can be really oversaturating to have that much news in your face all the time. So I've been limiting my news consumption and I've been trying to find outlets that don't involve Twitter or Instagram because I think they're just turning into these really toxic platforms. There's just little things you can do and you have to know yourself and know your level of mental um, capacity and you have to decide what's good for you and don't let anyone tell you that you're doing too much or too little. Just make sure you're checking in on yourself and your loved ones. So the first type of face covering is literally the easiest. You just need a piece of square cloth. Here I'm using a bandana and you're going to lay it out flat, fold it into a triangle, and then you are going to fold the top about one inch to two inches down, like so. And then you are going to tie it to your face and tuck the triangle part that hangs down into your top for optimal protection. This is literally so easy. Anyone can do this. The second method is more of a mask. So once again, you need a bandana or square piece of cloth and two rubber bands. I used hair ties. You're going to fold it in two thirds. And then you are going to take your first rubber band and you are going to kind of fold the thirds into thirds again as you wiggle the rubber band on. You can also fold it before you put the rubber bands on. I just didn't do it that way. But here's me attaching the second rubber band. And then you're going to take the ends and you're going to fold them inwards over the rubber band and tuck them. And then you're going to tuck the other one in. And that's the inside of your mask. See the rubber bands? That's the front side. Place the folded side over your face and the rubber bands over your ears to make a makeshift no-sew mask. This is the mask that I've been making to donate to places and for people in my community. It has a bendy piece at the nose that allows it to mold to your face. It expands like a regular medical mask. It's two layers of fabric thick and has elastic for the ear holes. You can also use ribbon. You need any type of woven fabric. You can use t-shirt, sheets, or scrap fabric. This fabric that I'm using was donated. It is super beautiful, but it ended up being too thick, so I switched halfway through this tutorial. You need a pair of scissors, a tape measure or ruler, a pair of pliers, some elastic, some wire or something that bends, and then some ribbon if you don't have elastic. First, you're going to lay out your fabric and you're going to measure it to be 16 inches long by eight and a half inches wide. Use scissors or a fabric cutter. I'm using a fabric cutting roller here, but you can also cut it out with scissors. And you're going to take it and fold it down in half. This is when you need your wire and you're going to measure out a piece that's about five inches. Cut it and then you're going to take the ends and you roll them in so that they're not sharp. You can also use an elastic grocery bag tie that you can find in a grocery store. Next, open up your folded piece of fabric and put the piece of wire in about a quarter inch or so down from the top. For the sake of the tutorial, I'm drawing a line here so you can see where I'll be sewing. Bring it over to your sewing machine. And what you're going to do is go up to the start of the wire, lower your presser foot, and you're going to use a zigzag stitch 
to encase the wire in the center of the stitch. Watch out so you don't break your needle here. And the wire is encased by the zigzag stitch. I then go over it another time to make sure that the wire encasing is durable. Next, you're gonna take it over to your ironing board and you are gonna fold it down into thirds. The zigzag stitch should be exposed on the front of the mask and that is the top of the mask. Then take your iron and press these three folds or pleats. For the next step, I'm using my serger, but you can also use a sewing machine and use the zigzag stitch and you're gonna serge or zigzag stitch the bottom. Then you are gonna take your pleats, hold them together, and you're gonna serge or zigzag stitch over the end. This is when I realized that my fabric was too thick because it jammed up my serger and left this horrible rough edge. Usually it would look like this, so I switched masks. That's the inside that goes against your face. This is the outside of the mask, and you can see it would expand like a regular medical mask would, and the fold should be down. Now take your elastic and you're gonna measure six and a half inches. Seven inches if the person's head is very large, but six and a half is more than enough for most people. If you're using ribbon, you're gonna cut two 17 inch pieces for each side and attach them the same way that I attach the elastic. Since I used a serger, I have to fold down the edges and then I attach the elastic. You can use a pin, but I don't think it's necessary. And you're gonna put the elastic in the upper corner on the outside of the mask and you're going to use a zigzag stitch to attach it going over it a couple times to make sure that it's secure and then if you use the serger you're going to cut off the excess tail from the serger that you folded down if you're using ribbon do not fold it over you're going to attach a different piece of ribbon to each end and tie it behind your head but if you're using elastic to make an ear hole then you're going to fold it down and attach the other corner and repeat this step for the other side and it will look something like this when you mold it to your face and pull it down. Hope this tutorial was helpful for anyone. Please comment if you have any questions and thank you so much for watching. I hope everyone stay, stays healthy and safe.